Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Now, I know it's been a little while since I've been on the channel. There's no real good reason for that. Moving on. In today's video, I'm going to be taking you guys through my five steps. Of course, there is no one way or correct way to do it. This is just the style that I use. I've created a video like this similarly before, but I wanted to really clarify it for you guys and take you step by step how I do it all. Um, so if you're interested, then stick around. If you're not interested, there are plenty of other good videos on YouTube. So the first step that I use to create my art is I get a rough draft sketch down. Um, the sketch is really important because I find it for me it's the fastest way to fix any proportional issues, anatomical issues, perspective and like character design issues. Um, so I recommend starting with a sketch. Ironically, that is the one bit that I didn't manage to record as I was doing this, which is why Spider-Man so suddenly pops into view. Um, I had to do a sketch beforehand of it. So make sure with your sketch you're fixing problems early, because if you don't fix problems early, one or two brush strokes um, now might save you a couple hundred later where you're busy trying to recreate a really highly rendered form that you've got in the wrong proportions or something like that. So step two is defining your values. Now some people can go straight into just putting color down and they can get the values correct with that. Um, if you don't know what values are, essentially that is just the way it, if it was turned to black and white, um, how would you be able to read it? It would be the difference between light and dark and those are what your values are. So um, I like to do black and white first because one, Photoshop allows you to then overlay colors. But two, um, it really helps narrow down how many different things you have to be thinking of at the same time. So you can just focus on your values, getting it to really read well. This is also the time where you want to get your lighting down. Once again, I would advise to try fix it and getting looking as best as possible now because it saves you time later. Um, so when you've got your values down, you'll move on to stage three, which is the color blockout. Now in this stage, I, at least using Photoshop, I like to add a new layer and I'll set it to whatever layer style is giving me the color combination that I want best. So for example, with the red that I put on his hoodie, I actually set that to multiply because when I set it on color, it was actually too bright. My values were too bright in the image. Be sure to just mess around with the different styles of overlays. You'll notice I also like to do a gradient map over the top. Sometimes this is just to get a little bit of color down already. It makes your shadow, like for me, I like to make my shadows a little bit blue and my highlights a little bit warmer. Um, and I also set this to color so that I don't mess with the values that I've got. So when you're satisfied with your colors and the way that it's working with the light, you can then move on to the next stage, which is rendering. By this stage, your proportions, colors, values, and everything else should look good. The image should be fine by now. It should look good, feel good. It might just be missing a little, of, a little bit of detail and effects and things that make it pop, but it should stand well by itself at this stage. So rendering is the fun and relatively easy part. Um, this is where you are just adding detail and texture and materials. Um, to your character, reflections, anything like that. Um, the main thing to keep in mind is you want to draw the viewer's eye by adding de detail in specific places. You don't want to add detail everywhere or have everywhere be super rendered out. The reason for this is it actually is a bit overwhelming for the eye. It helps if, for example, the character's face is what you want them to focus on. It'd help to have the most detail on the face and then have it kind of lessen in detail and focus towards the rest of the body. So this is the fun part. Add your textures and clothing wrinkles and little highlights. And then we move on to the final stage. This is the stage where I like to add rim lighting, color dodge, different like effects over the top just to make things read a little bit better. I would recommend not going too crazy on this. At first, when I first discovered like reminding and color dodging and making things pop, I would go way too ham on it. Um, and it just gets too overwhelming. You don't know what to look at. Less is more when it comes to this one. Um, 
but once you have finished these final adjustments, you can pretty much do your background. In my case, I like to do blurred kind of backgrounds, or at least in the case of this painting, um, just indicating uh, maybe he's in a city, there's tall buildings, there's street lights, there's something like that. That's about as far as I go with it, and then I call this done. This is done for my mate Dan, who's got a song coming out very soon. I'll hopefully chuck a link to that, but this is the cover for that song. So I got commissioned to do this, so a big thank you to him for letting me do this. As a sum up, you want to sketch, fix all your proportions, anatomy, perspective, and design issues at this stage. Then move on to values, you fix all your lighting, get all your values and silhouettes reading really well. Um, then you go into the color blockouts, where you just get all your colors down. And by this stage, it's, it's stand fairly well. It should feel, if you're going for 3D, it should feel 3D like it has form, like it has lighting and colors, and it pretty much is fine as is. And then stage four is rendering, where you put down your details, draw the eye to a certain point, and then the final detail stage, which is step five, where you can add your color dodge, your room lighting, your effects, things to make it really pop and draw the eye in. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I really hope the tutorial was helpful. If you want to send me any of the art you've made using the tutorial, you are welcome to. I've got Instagram. You can also join the Discord, which is down in the description below. Um, there's a bunch of other artists there posting stuff. It's, a, it's To be honest, it's a little bit dead right now. But as people filter in and as we get events happening and critique getting done and people posting stuff, then I'm sure it'll pick up. Otherwise, the rest of my links are down below if you're interested in anything else I do. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.